check 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 one two it is sunday march 20th 2022 and i want to show you today a c plus plus custom study for sierra chart that i built for a couple of futures guys in fat cat's room and what it does is it takes values that you have put into a google spreadsheet and it renders them up onto the chart so uh, at the beginning here i'll show how it works and then you want to if you want to know how the code works uh, you can keep watching at the end but basically go to analysis studies add custom study and it's called google sheets levels importer i'm going to go ahead and add that and in the options here there's a couple of things um, the first one is the google sheets url so i'm just going to pull in this sample google sheets url uh, this is for the es here's a couple of just uh, dummy data levels you can also draw rectangles by providing a value in column B. So anything that only has a value in column A is going to be a horizontal line. But if you want a rectangle or a shaded zone area, uh, you provide a second value in column B. And then you just pick a color from the from the list, um, a type of line. Uh, zero is going to be a solid line, and one is going to be a dotted line, and two is going to be a dashed line. And these are just the various Sierra chart line types. The width of the line that you want, and then... Um, the alignment of the text whether you want the label the note here to be on the right side which is a two or on the left side which is a one and let's go ahead and grab this url you don't want the end that says edit you just want everything before it and we will go ahead and move this over here and that's what i pasted here so you can see it just has the google docs link transparency level that's how transparent your lines want to be if you want it to be not transparent at all completely 100 percent opaque and visible set it to zero if you want it to be barely barely visible set it to 99 um, this will show a price label on the right side and this is a place where i am storing some temporary files after we have downloaded them from the google uh, drive i need a place to store it on the hard drive if you don't have sierra installed at c colon uh, Sierra chart backslash Sierra chart you need to update this for wherever you have it stored so those of you running some kind of crossover on a Mac running Sierra on Mac or Linux or something you may have something else here um, you might have it stored on another drive other than C colon it doesn't have to be the Sierra chart uh, path it can be any real path um, so I've added all that and now I'm gonna go ahead and just hit OK and it is going to read in those values and I don't see anything. Ah, that's because we are far away from those values. There they are. Let me uh, actually let me just switch to a one day. There they are. They're up here. Like I said it was dummy data and you can put the data in wherever you want. Um, but basically let's go ahead and look at how this works. 48 28 is here and 48 38 is the second price so it's going to be a rectangle okay and it's a the color is this and the note is zone um, this one that says virgin poc jan 4 that's right here the yellow okay and so on and so forth so you can really quickly modify this so let's say i want to modify it to make add a level for the current price action let me go to a five minute here on the es and let's say i wanted to mark high a day here 44.65 i could just do something like this 44.65 yesterday high a day uh, let's make it i don't know gold and we'll make the line type be dotted and line with one and i want it aligned on the right side and then i go ahead and hit my insert key or else you can just go to recalculate and reload but it's easier to just hit your insert key which i'll do now and it goes ahead and pulls those down and now you can see that that value that i put in here on the uh on this google sheet yesterday high a day is visible here if i want to change the note i can just say yesterday high of day not hit high of day and if i come here and hit reload it's going to pull that in and render it so you can see how this is quick uh 
quickly importing all the levels from Google Sheets. Now, if that's all you care about and you don't care about how the code works, you can go ahead and visit the GitHub link in the description of this video and download this. Um, and you can use the uh, the Sierra Chart Builder to uh, select the file and then uh, build it using the Remote Builder, and then you can add it. But if you want to know how the code works, let's take a peek into that now. Um, up here at the top, we are including the Sierra Chart libraries, also the C string libraries. Um, this is the format of the Google spreadsheet. You have to follow this format, otherwise this code won't consume it. Um, I have a function that I wrote for logging to a file. I stole it from a helper uh, library that I have built, kind of modified it specifically for this use case. We'll come back to this. Um, but the study itself here is uh, starting off here, and we have a couple of inputs, including the file path, which is the uh, Google spreadsheet path, the level of transparency, whether or not you want to show prices on the labels, and then the temp file path. And what we're doing is we're setting the defaults here in this branch, or in this code block, and then here we are going ahead and formatting the URL of the Google spreadsheet. This is a requirement here in order to have Google spit out a CSV format file when we hit that URL, otherwise it won't work. So I'm adding that on to the end of the URL. And then here's the beginning of the HTTP request that we make to Google to fetch the CSV of the spreadsheet. And it's basically making a, a request and then storing the response. And what we do is we take that response, store it to local disk, and then we go ahead and rip through that um, using a file stream. I go ahead and take out any quotes, double quotes that Google has added in between the CSV fields. I tokenize everything that's on each line because CSVs are built um, uh, where each row is, is a separate line. That doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean. CSVs, formats, one row, whatever. Uh, the tool itself is being constructed here. Now, this is not using subgraphs. This is not using subgraphs, so let me go here and show the subgraph. This is empty. So um, this has limitations to how many subgraphs you can uh, insert onto a chart. And subgraphs are considerably heavier than the drawing tool, which is what I use. I use the drawing tool, either the horizontal line or the uh, rectangle, this guy. That's what I'm using. And those are considerably lighter drawing objects than using the uh, subgraphs. So I am going ahead and constructing a, a line. And then I am setting some defaults. And then I just rip through each of the fields on the CSV and set the values. So here's the uh, price being set up here. And then here is us detecting the price of a uh, rectangle being provided, switching to a rectangle style drawing. Here's the note label. Here's the color. Um, here's a, a block of uh, if, else, ifs, which could be used as a switch, um, implemented as a switch. But I think this is easier for, for beginner coders to read. So I left it like this. Um, here is a fill color. If we have a rectangle, we want to fill it in with the same color. Um, here's the line types, dash, solids, dashes, dots, dash dots, and dash dot dots. These are the Sierra chart uh, line types. Here is the line width. Um, here is, by the way, this A to I is converting a, a, like a character, uh, a character array to an integer. Um, and this is the text alignment. And then here we have some other things that are just uh, defining where that line gets drawn, the transparency level, which we set in the settings, the note getting applied, and then going ahead and using the tool. Oh, I can probably delete this. Um, and that's it. <laughs> That's how the whole thing works. So if you want to take a look at this code and modify it, maybe you want to come in here and add a couple more colors. You can come in here and add, just copy this line and say whatever color I want. And if you were to enter whatever color I want here, you could specify it to set the tool.color to some actual color. It has to be an actual color that's defined in the, in the file of, uh, gosh, what is it called? It's like SC colors or something. Yeah, these guys. 
So if you want to see all the color constants, you can use these, or you can set your own RGB values if you want to get really crazy. But these are the ones that I was using, and I just put the most common uh, usual suspects in there. So you close that buffer and undo that line. That's how you would add more colors. And that's it. So hope you guys can use this to import uh, some values from a CSV, if, or if you work with a team of traders, you can get your levels in the morning and everyone can render them on here. Um, just another example, if I wanted to create a rectangle from 4428 up to 4440, I could just go 4428, 4440, and I say, watch this rectangle, and we'll make it purple, and we'll make it this type. And these get defaulted even if I don't put them, so all I have to do is come in here and hit that, and there you go. Watch this rectangle, purple, 4428 to 4440. That's how easy it is. Hope that helps.